little accident over here. Pray that everything goes well. We had plenty of nurses in the house, and we're thankful for that. Very good help. All right, well, we are coming down to our final stretch. Um, I missed the ses session out here, but the ladies, um, ministry wives and the missionaries in the back, it was amazing. It was wonderful. So we're so thankful for that. Um, I want to just say before we move on, I wanted to just put a little plug in for my husband. We are having a Living in Spite of conference here in April. I believe the date is April 30th, but there are postcards on the back if you're interested. It's the last Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, the last Saturday in April. And what that is, some of you may remember years ago in our ladies' conferences, we would have our deaf church come, and they would do a, a special. We, um, Mrs. Joanne Ashley did, taught our sign language classes at that time, and her husband pastored our deaf ministry. The Ashleys had a handicapped son, um, severely handicapped, and he was deaf, and um, through that, they, they brought sign language into our church, and then, of course, the, the deaf church was born. Their son is now in heaven, but the Lord has led them to um, host what they call Living in Spite of Ministries, and it is a unique ministry um, brought into churches. They hold conferences, and it's geared at folks who are hurting, hurting for circumstances in their life, different situations that they might come up it, come up with. And you may know someone like that. You may be someone like that. Um, if you, the postcards, I believe, are on the back table. If you want to take one home to your pastor and tell him about it, you won't be sorry. It's a full day. I think um, it starts in the morning. It's probably over around 3.30 or so. There's a lunch provided. So I just want to put that in there. Also, Mrs. Vaprazan wanted me to let you know that if you would like to hear Miss Francie again, she will be at Metro Baptist Church in December. And Mrs. Vaprazan, where are you at? There she is. Okay, um, it, just see her and give her your mailing address if you'd like to um, have them send you an, a notice about that. Okay, well, we have a special before we go on. So we have Becky and Jessica, and they're going to have a song here. We've all done things that we're not proud of, made mistakes along the way, walked the path of least resistance, traveled roads that led to shame. But there's no Goodbye. 
and mercy now are waiting when you bow at Jesus' feet. Grace and mercy now are waiting when you bow at Jesus' feet. All right, we're going to have Francie come up, and she's going to have the last session of the day. So have you enjoyed having her here? And then been a blessing. Well, I'm not ready yet. I kind of feel like, remember in the old days when almost everybody, uh-oh, there's guys in the room. Come here, guys. Remember in the old days when almost all the girls wore slips? And if the slip was hanging, you'd say, it's snowing down south. <laughs> well, that's how I feel when I haven't gotten the microphone on yet when they ask me to come up. It's like, but I'm snowing down south. I'm not ready yet. So I'm getting this mic on, and the cord's going to hang, and I'll probably grab it and send it flying. But I'll try my best not to, OK, guys? Because, OK, they gave me the thumbs up. It's like, Francie, you're in the family. We'll pass over all your transgressions. <laughs> all right, well, I can't do this last closing session. Which, by the way, did you notice that conferences, retreats, seminars, all these things, they take at least a year to plan? They're over like that. Welcome to the wedding. The wedding's over. <laughs> it's the last session already. So here we go again, and I will be covering four points in this closing session on strength training. But before I get there, I have to give some stuff away. You all bought out the books I heard. And so um, they, I know they ordered plenty. I saw their order. So I don't know how you wiped them out like that, but bravo. Because I know they don't want them in the closet. That's always the worst is if there's leftovers. So thank you for buying the books. And if I didn't sign yours, my flight doesn't go till tomorrow. So I can still sign it for you if you want me to. On your way out the door, I'll meet you back there. But I want to give away some things from the shop at Keep the Heart. Did you notice on your worksheets that there's a little box with squigglies in it called a QR code? How many of you did not know what that little box was for? Be honest. Oh, look, hands. They're like, what? Why is that on there? And the rest of you are like, <coughs> novices. <laughs> OK, so a QR code takes you somewhere. So when you hold your cell phone camera over that little code, go ahead and do it. Permission granted. Get your phones out. You'll never hear that said in church. Get your phones out. <laughs> Don't do it tomorrow. But today, you can get your phone out. Hold it over that little QR code with your camera. You just take your camera, and then it'll pop up and let you go right to a link. And when you tap the link, poof, you're shopping at Keep the Heart. How cool is that, right? You know I didn't come up with that. That's, you have to have cool techie people in your life to do stuff like that. But that's how you get to the shop the easy way. The old way is you just go to keeptheheart.com. So if you're the kind who doesn't have a cell phone that lets you do poof, then you can do it through your desktop, laptop, or any of those other tops. So, okay, now they're all shopping and they're not paying any attention. <laughs> and whose fault is that? I think I know who the guilty party is. Okay, all right, get out of the shop right now. Okay, what are we doing in here? So now that you know how to use that, I also wanted to invite you to please tune into our podcast because what happens when you listen to the podcast, it's not about Francie. All I'm doing is I'm the world's largest plagiarizer you ever met. I take what I read from the Word of God and I repeat it everywhere. 
And so really, honestly, that is the sum total of it. But the podcast is like having little mini devotions. It's almost like in my mind, I can imagine you sitting at my house at the dining room table. And I'm just saying things I would say to any sisters I care about. And they're on purpose very short because everyone these days is extremely busy. So one of the biggest complaints we've heard at Keep the Heart is, can you guess it? They're too short. It's like, well, can you win for losing? If it was an hour and a half, what would I hear? Right, so I'm gonna stick with short, mainly because I have to edit them. <laughs> and if it's an hour and a half, I'd be still editing. I couldn't even come here. So it, I want you to tune in, but here's what happens when you tune in, most unusual. The secular world that hosts podcasts hosts anybody's podcast. And ours is hosted by Podbean, which is just, again, a, a podcast host that puts all kinds of podcasts on the air. It was recommended to me by Faith Music Radio that I use the one that they're using. I followed those directions and went with Podbean. Well, Podbean contacted me about a month ago and said, congratulations, you've been selected as podcast of the week. We'd like to feature you but there's a catch. I thought there had to be. If there's, nobody does anything for congratulations. <laughs> so I read the little catch and then ran it by the people that I trust. You should always have trusted people when you're in a realm you don't know. And the podcast land is land of pod. I don't know land of pod. <laughs> and so I go to the pros who do know everything about that at Faith Music Radio, Faith Music Missions, and I say, hey, is this legitimate? Would you do this? They said we would absolutely do this because it'll spread the gospel will spread, Christian programming, do it. Now here's the catch. Every episode that I do, they said I have to do four of them, I have to mention. And this is hosted by Podbean. So when you hear that, understand it's temporary. <laughs> I only have to do that four times. I'm up to number three this week. And then on number four, you'll hear my heels clicking in the background because I'm done doing that. But they want a little credit in exchange for giving us a lot of exposure. What happened when they threw Keep the Heart up there as podcast of the week is a ton of people started listening to the podcast that weren't listening before. I cannot help but guess that several of those are not saved. I know unsaved people follow me on Instagram. I know unsaved people follow me on Facebook. Do you want to know how come I know? Because they say negative things. <laughs> Give away. You know, now, now, they're, now they're letting it hang out. And, and my mind is thinking, but gotcha on my page. <laughs> You're busted clean wide open. <laughs> they, they say things like yesterday's poster, I was telling Sherry and the girls about this. Somebody got on there and called um, Bible versus brainwashing. Oh, I see. You guys are not going for that. Yes, but I was telling the ladies that you have to have policies if you're going to be on social media. First of all, you should expect some negative flack. If you're born again, some people aren't buying what, we're, what we have available here. Do you understand that? That's not personal. Would you please, please, please stop taking things personally that aren't personal? Remember the Q-tip lesson I taught you a couple few years ago? Carry a Q-tip in your purse because it stands for the acronym Quit Taking It Personally. Not everything is personal, many things are not. And if you've got that Q-tip down in the bottom of your purse and you're tempted to take it personally, you reach down there, you feel that Q-tip, mangle it a little bit, and then get over it. <laughs> so when somebody jumps on my Instagram page and says, best brainwashing ever, <laughs> I can't answer that person, I don't know who they are and it wouldn't be right to engage them. But it's my page, so I can moderate my page and make my own general comment, and that's what I do. I'll make a general comment when someone makes a negative dig down here. I'll stay up on the high road and say, the Bible's not brainwashing, it's heart washing. <laughs> you know, and then some verses will just happen to get thrown in for good measure, and you know, <laughs> they're just, but I, I, I don't want to attack. I want, I want people to get saved. So, so I can't help but say to myself, you came over here. There's a whole lot of places in the World Wide Web they could go, and they're coming over here. So this is what happens when you listen to a podcast. Those podcast hosts notice 
look at those numbers. Who is she anyway? She's nobody. And then they want to pop it up there and, and show it off, which then takes a nobody into the somebody zone. She's still a nobody, but God is somebody. And who am I always talking about? May he be magnified, right? We have to do what? Decrease. He must. And that's the way we want to keep it. So tune into the podcast. I think you'll enjoy it. You'll feel like, ah, oh, I totally have known her forever. That's what I keep hearing from people. And in fact, somebody walked up to me in a store and said, are you Francie Taylor? I was talking to my sister and I turned around and I said, I am. How would you know? And she said, I know your voice. <laughs> to which I replied, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, oh, she's got a, my voice in her head? I thought that only happened to my kids. <laughs> like, mom's here. Oh, you know, I just, I just, I said, I'm so impressed because I don't recognize voices. I work on recognizing faces. And I'm really working on names. But voices? How does anybody do that? It's pretty cool beans is what I say. Now let me give some stuff away. Come up here, Vanna. <laughs> this is my pretty helper, Sadie. She has been so good to me. Say, thank you for giving me a Sadie. Can I take her home? <laughs> Sadie, but no, I can't have you. OK, Sadie brought me coffee with real half and half. And Sherry brought me clementines. So can I? No, I can't have either one of them. OK, all right. We're going to give away some things. And here's how we're going to do it randomly. So the first thing I'm going to give away is one of these marvelous little shell bags. And I'm going to, I, I, I harvest these myself. I go to the Gulf of Mexico, Pensacola Beach, and I'm the lady that's bent over at the edge of the shore. <laughs> and I'm picking up shells as I go along. And so you're going to get one of these hand harvested little bags of shells. And I, I actually hand, I don't let other people stuff the bags for me because I want a special combination in there. So it's that special to me. It might not mean much to you. But I want you to have one if you have a birthday near mine. My birthday is February 21st. Who's close? Over here? What's your birthday? OK, anybody closer than 25? Stan? March 12th is not actually in the zip code, but that was a nice thing. <laughs> nice try. I don't blame you. I would have tried that. She sold my. OK, is anybody closer than 23? OK. All right, and yours is? February 21st. Oh, come on. OK, so where's my teenager girl? Come here, teenager, come here. Hey, are you, is this your little one? Oh, you, I love you, mama. You do too, huh? OK, run it back to the lady who's standing. Thank you. All right, I need another teenager. OK, now, my beloved Norman H. Taylor is in heaven, and we all know that. But he had a birthday when he was on earth. What happens to birthdays in heaven? Men? What happens to birthdays in heaven? They're doing what we do. OK. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are my brothers without a suntan. <laughs> totally adopted. This is family. That's what would have happened. That would have been the exact response at the dining room table at my house. Everybody would have been looking around for it. So since we all collectively don't know, Norman's birthday here on Earth was August 21st. Who's close? OK, stand up. Who's closer than August 25th? I'm August 21st. Oh. Girl, take it back to the lady who's standing. <laughs> OK, next in the shop at Keep the Heart is this shirt that was born out of a, a, a post on uh, Instagram that said, be like Jesus is better than you do you. You know, some of these worldly sayings, we, we, had, we really take them on without thinking about them. And we need to maybe take a step back from them just in case they're not all that good. And you do you is not all that good. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of sick of me. <laughs> I want more of Jesus showing through than me. So I brought you one 
be like Jesus is better than you do you. We had it put on a shirt. A little designer did the design for me and then a shirt maker did the shirt. And this is going to the person who has a birthday the same way or close to my oldest child. Austin Henderson Taylor was born on May 16th of 1986. So who's May 16? Okay, May 16, May 16, your hand went up first. So here's, here's what we're gonna do. One is getting the shirt, and one is getting a book. All right, which one do you want? Then you get, which one do you want? <laughs> Teenagers. Okay, I'll decide since nobody else wants to decide. We're gonna go book that way. Could you raise your hand? And we're gonna go t-shirt that way. And the last one is going to the person that can tell me where I am in scripture. Now, Sadie is the judge, and Sadie is gonna be looking for the first hand that goes up. There'll be no fighting or arguing. I haven't said the verse yet. <laughs> Why are your hands up? <laughs> what kind of special cheating is that? <laughs> oh, oh, stop it. Okay, so now I'm going to say the verse all the way through. And then I'm going to say, where am I? And the first hand that Sadie sees, she's going to point to you. And you're going to only have to tell her what book of the Bible I'm in. Not even chapter and verse. How easy is that, right? But, and I, the teenagers are included, so they're on this front row breathing all hard. So you better get ready, because they like games. Okay, now, don't cheat. And don't shout out. If you aren't sure she picked you, don't say anything because you might give away. You might be close and then you give it to somebody else, okay? All right, listen carefully. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Where am I? Which one? Jean jacket, stand up. No, ma'am. Pick another one. I think it was right there with the red hair. With the red hair, please stand. So close. We're in the Old Testament, but that's not it. There's a there's a front row here. I think we should pick her. Oh my! You're, we're in the we're we're in the right, but that's not it. Okay, hand over here. No, ma'am. Good guessing. You had a guess. <laughs> Let's pick the striped shirt right back there. No, ma'am. And in your row, another hand. Clap for her. Take care of the book. And she just won a copy of ICU In Christ Unconditionally, the Bible study that is being used by ministries now all over the country. And when we wrote ICU in conjunction with Abeka Books and Joyful Life Ministries, that project was done at a time when I was still deeply adjusting to life without Norman. And yet the Lord... That's all I can say, because I don't even know how those three products came off the line. I would show up at the office at Abeka, go in the office, shut the door behind me. Sometimes the first thing I'd do in the morning is cry. Then I'd sit down at the desk, turn on the computer, boot everything up, and start writing. And then I'd go home at the end of the day. And that would be sometimes a tearful drive. And I'd cry even harder if I missed my exit. Because I live on almost the Florabama border. So mine is the last exit in the state of Florida. If I miss it, the next exit is 17 miles away. And the GPS says, welcome to sweet home, Alabama. <laughs> that wasn't what I was trying to do. I was just trying to find the sweet driveway of Francie Taylor. 
But in the midst of that, ICU was born. And when it was being constructed, and I was talking to the leadership there at Abeka and, and PCC, I was explaining that I was hoping what would happen with this Bible study is people would be able to bring anybody and they'd understand what's being taught. And this is exactly what's happening. People are bringing their unsaved friends and neighbors and their friends are getting saved because the first thing inside the ICU Bible study series, right on the inside cover, which is where I asked them to put it, is put it right on the inside of the cover. The gospel's right on the inside of the cover. That way it looks so natural and normal for you to get right to the business here. A person's deepest need is not that they have problems in their life that need solving, but that they don't have Christ. First start there, then go on into the other things. But you'll find that it's a very easy Bible study to use. The leader's guide is what you need if you're going to lead a Bible study group or a small group or a Sunday school class. It can be used in any of those settings. The participant guide is only for your participants. Don't order that one online just because it's a lower price, because that's what a lot of you all do. You go on there and say, oh, well, look, participant's cheaper. Participant has blanks. So don't do that. You heard it here. But now that you know about all those things, I think we've covered all the housekeeping, plus had a little bit of fun while we were doing it. And then for you Instagrammers, you heard me tell that little Instagram story. Keep us, um, keep us outnumbering those who are not saved by following us on Instagram. And then while you're on there, be good girls. If you ever, ever, ever see someone make a comment on the page of Keep the Heart that's not very kind, do not feel obligated to defend. Christ didn't do that. So we don't do that. So you never, ever, ever have to do that. But please do follow us on Instagram. Well, now let's get into this closing lesson on strength training. Let's pray. Lord, I, I can't believe we're already at the end of the day, but I thank you so much for what you've done all throughout this day. The lessons by Sonia and Sherry and the time with the beautiful teens and all the things you've done, we thank you. Lord, I pray that there'll be fruit that remains and that we will go out of here committed to yielding whatever you've touched. And each one of us is unique, Lord, so you touch us uniquely. I just pray, Father, that we would, even all the way through the closing lesson here, remain yielded to you. And we ask you now to bless this lesson in Jesus' name. Amen. Eleanor Roosevelt is credited with this quote. A woman is like a tea bag. You can't tell how strong she is until you put her in hot water. <laughs> and God has hot water experiences that we get placed in sometimes, and we don't necessarily care for the hot water. We don't like those experiences. But did you know that at the same time that God is doing that, he actually has a motive? God always has a reason for what he's doing. And the motive for us having hot water experiences, strength training. God wants to build our strength. He wants us to have spiritual strength. And we would never pray, Lord, make my life harder so that I can be stronger. We would not. So he just brings it. He doesn't wait for our permission, doesn't need it. He just brings these things into our lives that really do help us. It's always true that hard times are vehicles for building strength. Even though we wouldn't ask for it, it still remains true. So turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 24.10. And that's going to be our verse that we're going to read out loud together. And then we're going to go right into these four points. And then we're going to be amazingly done. Although I did hear that if you're not ready to be done, we're going to have a pizza party at the Browns' house after this. So. <laughs> First, her eyeballs were big, and then she laughs. No. <laughs> oh, are there any Spanish-speaking ladies in here? Not this time. I know that when your daughter-in-love is here, because sometimes what I'll do is I'll invite us all over to the pastor's house in Spanish, and she doesn't even know that I'm saying it, so she's just sitting there smiling. Like <laughs> and then I say what I said in English, and she's like, Okay, yeah, no, we're not all going to Pam's house after this. Let's read Proverbs 24, 10 together. Ready? Begin. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Now, there's more than one way we can look at that verse. There's the negative point of view that's like, who are you calling a weakling? Or there's the positive side, 
there's a need here. And God intends to meet the need. I choose to look at that positive side of it because honestly, there are times in our lives where we have weaknesses and they're highlighted by adversity. You know, they were undercover when things were fine because who can't do well when things are fine? If you can't do good in the sunshine, then honestly, we're just gonna have to buy out Walmart and get you lots of umbrellas because life rains. There's some things that happen in life and they're not gonna be sunny days all the time. But God will bring in these times and as these seasons are allowed in our lives because we are living in this fall of man generation after Genesis, there's going to be hard things. And God is going to strengthen us through those vehicles. But we do have to come along for the ride. We can't be whining and resisting all the time. The word strength, by definition, means power or vigor of any kind. You don't have to write that down. But the second part of the definition, including the power to resist attacks. Now there's where it gets significant. We need that kind of power. And so we can't afford to push back and say, no, I don't want anything hard because it'll leave us weak. So if you're taking notes, number one out of four, suffering is part of the strengthening process. Suffering is part of the strengthening process. And just like before, the scriptures will be right there so that you can turn to those. But 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 and by the way, that really needs to be read the entire chapter so you can see the whole context of what he was talking about. But it says this, we're coming in at the but. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. But did you catch the after? Mm -hmm. First, we have to suffer. Then he brings in all this gold. I mean, literally gold. The word make you perfect. That means to make you sound. That means that you're going to be complete and whole. And then how about establish? Oh boy, that means God's going to stabilize us. Who doesn't need more stability? We don't want to be like this. We don't want to be the roller coaster ride. We want that stability. Then he's going to strengthen us, and we understand that that means he's going to make us strong. And then how about settle you? Hmm. That literally translates into he's going to make you grounded. So God said, I'm going to do all of this, but first you're going to experience some suffering. So what are you going through right now? In your mind, what comes to mind that you're going through, and you strongly don't like it? Now you've got another spin on it you actually have some strength training going on. Suffering is part of the strengthening process. It's part of how God does it. So a couple things to remember under number one. First of all, remember that suffering doesn't make appointments. These won't be up on the screen. These are just a couple things I'm telling you. And I'm mentioning that because sometimes we almost feel like suffering is something that you order on Amazon <laughs> and you can decline it. It's not like that. Suffering just, boom, here it is, you're in it. The good news is it's not marked on your calendar. Think that over for a second. If there was a big red S on any given day and you knew that that was going to be a day you suffered something untold, who would get out of bed? <laughs> See, so God has veiled it from us on purpose. He doesn't want us to know that we're going to go to the doctor and get a bad diagnosis. He doesn't want us having advanced news on that. He doesn't want us to know that that loved one that we adore only has five more months. He doesn't want us to know that. He doesn't want us to know that somebody's going to get in a car drunk, drive and plow into our vehicle and injure us. He doesn't need us to know these things. None of these things are at all in his line of things he wants us to know. He just wants us to understand that suffering is not going to make an appointment. It's just going to show up. Now, our response is key. Failure to pass the class in Suffering 101 means you'll need to repeat that class. So we, we want to stop being so emotional about suffering. You want to know two words that don't have an answer on this side of heaven? Why me? 
And do you want to know a follow-up question to that question? Who else would you prefer? Is there anybody you want it to happen to? I think sometimes we ask things without really thinking it all the way through to the finish line. And so God wants us to know that suffering is part of his process. Another thing suffering does, if you wanted to jot this down, is it strengthens compassion. Let me tell you what, don't you love running into somebody who knows what you're going through? Don't you love going to the pastor's wife and saying, is there anybody I could talk to about this? Would you have somebody you could suggest? And she right away can give you a name because somebody else has already suffered what you're going through. That young mommy in here who went through a miscarriage, you're a resource. Don't you ever forget what you suffered is not in vain. Widows in here, you're a resource. People can come and talk to you. Linda, Sonia, she's a resource and further. I was just telling her this upstairs. God taps some widows and says, I've selected you. You're going to marry again. And the widow's soul screams, no! Doesn't it? And it's not because we didn't like being married. It's the opposite. It's because we loved being married to that person. Can you even imagine? But now we got two different kinds of resources here. Their suffering is not in vain. Have you had a child that has veered strongly off course? Please stop talking about them behind their back or to other people negatively about them. And instead, you love those children with every fiber of your being. And then help somebody else who's going through that. And while you're helping them, tell them, oh, by the way, Mom, we all miss a spot somewhere when we're cleaning the windows. Every parent is an imperfect parent, so no parent raises perfect kids. So just go ahead and, and, and be real about this stuff. Let's stop being plastic. That's what Barbie was. She's fantastic. She's made of plastic. Let's stop being Barbie on everything. There's no Barbie needed and don't need any Barbie in Christianity. We need real people. And real people have real problems, but we need to deal with them biblically. So you're a resource. If you're handling your matter wisely, you can pass that very same baton to the person running up behind you who then may end up with a restored child because they handled the matter wisely. All of the suffering, no matter what suffering it is, name it, and we become resources for someone else and it increases our compassion. When you hear that someone else is going through something and you've been through it, doesn't your soul groan? Because you are aware. That's exactly what God wants. Somebody who understands. He gets us. He understands us. And so we want to be careful that we let God do this in us. Suffering is part of strength building. Number two, challenges are training tools. Challenges are training tools. Now, a beautiful passage of Philippians 4, verses 12 through 13, give us the ups and downs of Christian living. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed to be full and to be hungry, to abound and suffer need. And then the famous verse that we can all quote together, I can do all things, let's hear it, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, I think we need to keep it in the context he meant it, because what he's saying is, I can go through hard, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Not just, I can do anything I want to do. No, it's like, okay, here's the picture. Sometimes we're going to abound. Sometimes we're going to suffer need. Sometimes we're going to be full. Sometimes we're going to be hungry. This is the way life is. My husband used to teach it in our Sunday school class. Hey, people, life is like a heartbeat. And there's going to be ups and downs on your chart. Just accept it, because the alternative is a flat line. You don't want a flat line on an EKG. And we're not going to have a flatline life. It's a heartbeat life, ups and downs, a base to bound, full, hungry, abound, suffer, need, all in the strength of who? Right, not us. There's the great news. We don't have to have our strength to do this. It's his strength. So we learn how to accept the combo platters that life serves us when we accept the fact that this is part of God's strengthening process. He uses these rotations. 
So life is going to be quiet. Then it's not. Then there's going to be something going on. Then there's peace. And here comes the next thing. Do you notice the breaks? Do you notice the peaceful moments? I do. Oh, I love them. And you know what I want to do every single time it happens, and I'm careful to do this? <gasps> thank you. Lord, thank you. And he knows I mean it. Because it's not always quiet. When it's quiet, have you thanked him? But how about when it's stormy? That's when we have to do something we don't always understand. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So here comes hard. Is our first response, thank you. Not if we're honest, huh? That's okay, as long as you get there. Just get there. Your first response may not be at all near thank you, and then catch yourself. You catch you. And then say to the Lord, thank you. You said in everything. That means all things. Lord, you're going to do something here. And I can't see it, and I don't understand it, but I trust you. When you trust him, he doesn't have to explain everything. You don't have to understand everything when you trust him. Because you trust him. Do you understand? This is so vital. It's all part of God's incredible training. Challenges build spiritual muscle. And finally, under number two, not all challenges are for alarm fires. Now, just let's get real about that. Let's stop being so big, foamy lather over little stuff. Ah, you know, wait, ah, bring it down. Did no one died? What is all this overreaction we have? People are so quick to make big, hairy deals out of stuff. Are you doing that? Then you're hearing this so that you'll stop it. And you're the one who can make you stop. Or God can correct you. You get to choose on that one. I would say stop. That's my suggestion. Because otherwise, because he loves us, he'll chasten us. He loves us that much. Loves us so much. He doesn't want to let us get away with being sloppy and careless in our responses and our reactions. I had to catch myself one day. You think I don't? What do you think? You think I walk on water and hung the moon? I can't. One day I was having a foamy lather response to something that was a small matter. And my other head said, physician, heal thyself. I think I do believe you're having a big hairy deal out moment here right now, oh, Miss Teacher. I talk to myself like that. I don't do it often. It's not, it's not my favorite tone of voice. But sometimes I have to clean my own clock so nobody else has to do it. Do you know what I mean? Once in a while, we got to get on ourselves. And I'm driving down the road. My heart is palpitating. Because Terminex called to tell me that I hadn't paid my bill. Does that even register on your Richter scale? I'll tell you how it would. If you lived in Florida, it would. Because I prepay my bug bill. <laughs> Terminex gets hundreds of dollars in advance from Francie because I don't want them missing one treatment. So I prepay the whole year in advance. They lost the payment. They lost hundreds of dollars. So I'm going, dig, 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 dig. the bugs are going to come get me. You know, and I'm having my, I'm driving while they're telling me this through the car phone, and I'm melting down. And the correction that came from years of practice of correcting the self, which is called ruling over your own spirit, which is found in Proverbs 25, 28, look it up. But the years of practicing that made me stop. Francie, come on. And every now and then you need to say to yourself, your name, come on. Come on, that is so not a big deal. I said, okay, well, you guys, you know what? I'm driving, and this is making me very nervous. I was honest, because I said, the thought of you not coming to do my bug treatment makes me extremely nervous. So I'm going to wait till I get home, and then I'm going to send you a copy of my paid bill. 
And they said, okay, that, that will be fine and we'll fix this. Now, the last thing I heard was, and we'll fix this. Now, they were going to fix it anyway. Why did I get all foamy lather? Why? Why do we do that to ourselves? I think sometimes we just enjoy that mode. <laughs> we can make ourselves stop. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. That's what it says in Proverbs 25, 28. And we can go there instead of the other place. God is trying to teach us how to have dominion over our minds, our thoughts, our reactions, our responses, so that we will be what he wants us to do. So he brings these challenges and it builds spiritual muscle. Number three out of four, it takes strength to exercise meekness. Uh-oh. Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, and again, if you'll look at this whole chapter, you'll find it quite fascinating as it all ties it together. But Jesus saying this, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Such a fascinating verse that as he was describing this to the disciples and anybody else in earshot, he was teaching them more than just this. He was actually indicating to them that that stirred up churning you always have inside of you, you don't have to live like that. If you'll take my yoke, Jesus said, upon you and learn, learn how to do life. Do it like this, he's saying. You copy me. Somebody's mad and loud, and they're in your face. Here's what I do, meek and lowly. I don't match mad and loud. And then guess who sleeps better at night? Ha! Ha! Jesus is brilliant. <laughs> we knew that. We knew that. Webster's 1828 defines meekness as softness of temper. That's hard. As well as forbearance under injuries or provocations. That's even harder. In other words, this is a spiritual workout here. We are not quick to forbear. We're quick to go after somebody. We're quick to match a tone. We're quick to be angry. We're quick to have, who do they think they are? What does she think she's doing? We are there instead of where God wants us to be. So he is going to teach us how to exercise meekness by bringing in provocations and injuries and then watching our response. So who offended you last week? Movie screen of your mind comes down, face pops up. I can't see it. Thankfully, neither can your neighbor. But God can. Who provoked you? Who irritated you? Who did you have thoughts about that weren't really godly? God says, nope, I'm going to teach you how to be like me. I'm meek and lowly. You're going to be like me, but it's going to be a workout. Do you know that anybody that we accuse of being provocative, anybody that we accuse of being an irritation, they could point the finger at us too and say the exact same thing about us? You realize that, don't you? You are just as irritating as your neighbor. <laughs> and so am I. So God wants to work on that in us, and so he is going to teach us through circumstances. And if we're paying attention, we'll see, oh, 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 wait, wait, this is a test. <laughs> I'm getting me an A. And we're going to be ready. But if we're not paying attention, somebody's going to provoke us. We're going to get irritated. We're going to react. They're going to respond. They're going to react. We're going to respond. And then this just starts to be in a, a tennis match. Who can smack the ball harder and keep it in bounds? Because that's what starts going on. So look with me at Proverbs 17, 14. And let's see one of the ways that we can really get better at this. Proverbs 17, 14 is like a hint of how we can know when we need to be really careful People relations are a little bit tricky. Sometimes we get caught off guard, but we have clues in scripture. That's why I was telling the teen girls, I want them to read their Bibles 
every day for the next 90 days using the proverb of the day. And the same goes for the adults. If you're not reading your Bible daily, why aren't you? Too busy. Those are two words that do not qualify. Too busy only means something needs to be cut or pushed aside or pushed further down into the day so that you can have time in the Word. But now, those of you who have listened to the Proverbs podcasts, the, the episodes where I'm only reading a proverb a day, you already know this. It takes me three minutes to read it. I think the intro and outro almost as long as the chapter. So you, in three to five minutes, really paying attention, can finish a proverb a day. So I'm going to challenge you the same thing I challenge the teenage girls, which I challenge ladies all over America. Read your Bible daily. The simplest way to start is go with the proverb of the day. Today is the... Okay, so if you would have read Proverbs 19 this morning, you would have seen the famous pot verse. I've taught pot here before. Pass over a transgression. The discretion of a man to furth is anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. Taught the teen girls that that also means, hey, some things you've just got to let it go. Stop clinging to things that offended you. Pass over the transgression. But they really, really offended me. Okay, so then the next time you really, really offend someone, would you like them to hang on to that? Or would you like them to show you some grace? Just think about that. The way we treat people should be the way we'd like to be treated. In other words, don't do stuff to people you hate having done to you. And don't treat people in a way that you hate having somebody treat you. Let's be biblical about this. So where was I? Proverbs 17, 14. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. All right, hint, hint. The beginning of strife, that's the beginning of what? Yeah, an argument's coming. You can see it. The scripture tells you. It's like when you let out water, you get the drip, 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 drip going. And you do not want to keep on talking. Because in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. So when you can sense that something's going in a bad direction, you can stop talking. This is how you head it off at the pass. Or you could keep talking, and you can go from the beginning of strife to the middle, and then the explosive end. Not necessary. People get hurt in just one little moment of harshness by another Christian who should know better. Younger Christians are often injured by older Christians. We're going to, there really, really, really is a day that we'll stand before God one day and give an account for how we live. There really, really is. This is not make believe here. So here we go, living any which way we want to. How are you going to account for that? Live thoughtfully. The next thing you say to someone, think about it before it comes out so you get a chance to edit it so that it sounds a lot sweeter than the way you're thinking it. Meekness is a strength builder. Number four, and our last. Strength is made perfect in weakness. Oh, this is so opposite of how we think. It is so opposite. But that's what scripture tells us, and Paul talked about it in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, when he said, and he said unto me, he's talking about Jesus, talking to him, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So first Paul's telling us, so I was praying, and here's what Jesus said in answer to my prayer. Hey, Paul, I heard you, but my grace is sufficient for you. So Paul said, okay, so since that's what Jesus said, then I'm going to glory in this infirmity. I'm not going to whine about it. I'm not going to say, poor me. And every time somebody sees me and they ask me how I am, I'm not going to get out my list of stuff that's wrong with me. Well, I ache, I have pains, everything's wrong, the doctor said. No, uh-uh. 
we're going to say, okay, well, I must have this weakness so that I can have more strength. If his strength is made perfect in weakness, then we don't have to fear weakness. Not that kind. The physical kind often serves many multiple purposes, but the abundant purpose is that the strength then of Christ is what we're going in, not our own fleshly. Really, I went in that dead zone again. We want to be really, really careful about trying to do everything in our own strength. Do you want to be awesome, tired, like to the point of exhaustion where you can barely even stand anymore? Do everything in your own strength. It'll wear you out. It'll wipe you flat. So are you bone exhausted? Stop doing everything in your own strength. Jesus never meant for us to live like that. His strength is made perfect in weakness. It's our weaknesses. And they become strength builders and strength tools in God's hands. But then there's the other weakness, emotional weaknesses. Now those are often more like a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We, saw, we kind of shot ourselves and now we're bleeding. And so we want to be careful. Emotional weaknesses are something we need to go ahead and turn over and yield to the Lord. So what is your emotional weakness if you think of one? Are you moody? Don't answer it. <laughs> and don't look at your neighbor like, yeah, girl. No, no, don't do that. Are you self-indulgent? You won't tell yourself no for anything. Are you fretful? Like, oh, something happened and you heard it on the news and your hair goes, because you're all scared now. Are you fretful? Are you controlling? This is my pond, and you don't come in this pond unless I tell you to. All of these things are indications of emotional weaknesses that God wants to work on us in us because he wants us to be more like the master. So surrender your weaknesses to God in prayer. You know what would happen if we never had a weakness? We'd become prideful. We'd think we, we've got it all going on. So see, we don't have it all going on. We need help. And so when God lets something come into your life that humbles you, Thank him, because he's actually doing us a favor when he humbles us. He's making us more like him. The power of Christ is magnified in our weaknesses. Well, ladies, Psalm 71, 16 says, I will go on, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. Going in the strength of the Lord is how God wants us to go. We can do that if we are in the Lord. But if you're one of hundreds in here, but you're actually kind of undercover secret service, and you've never had a time in your life where you've even asked Christ to be your Savior, I want to just say a word to you. Somebody brought you on purpose. And they're probably going to talk to you on the way back in the car about what I'm about to talk to you about right now. I have a heart condition that at any random point in time, my heart will go into strange very dangerous rhythms, and I'm at very high risk for sudden cardiac death. And they've talked to me about it again and again and again and again, and they've tried to do many, many things, and it's a thorn in the flesh. I'm glorying in my infirmity because I, I'm wondering if I might not go to heaven with my pumps on in the middle of a lesson. <laughs> well, how cool would that be? saying that I happen to think that that would be quite amazing. Oh my goodness. But here's the thing. I know where I'm going, so I have no fear. We've had talks about this in cardiology where I've had to almost smooth their feathers down because they want me to be as scared as they are of this condition. It's like, hold on, hold on. You're not the doctor to keep me from dying. You're the doctor to help me while I'm here in this life. But don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. And then I'm able to tell them why. Now, that doesn't mean everybody wants to get saved in the doctor's office that talks to me. In fact, sometimes they're looking at me over their mask like, you're certifiable. <laughs> and that's because they want me to be as afraid as they are. 
but we don't have to be, so I can't even fake it. I, I, I just, I can't. I, they're threatening me with heaven. <laughs> but they don't understand that, so I understand that they don't understand that. But listen, if you're here and you have never asked Christ to be your savior, that's so important. Do you know that that's more important than all the lessons we've taught all day long? So whoever brought you, brought you so that you could hear me say this. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, she's a sinner, she's a sinner. And we don't want to be sinners, but we are. And the scripture says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But it doesn't leave us there. Aren't you glad? Jesus died, and then the scripture says, but God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you've never done anything about that, that's why you're here today. And again, somebody brought you on exact purpose. By the way, I, I have to add, that's a fantastic friend. Somebody who would bring you knowing that you're going to hear at the very end of the lesson, this that I'm telling you now. And so one day when I was in a job interview and somebody shared the complete and total gospel with me, because I'm putting it in a nutshell because your friend will do the rest, the last verse that was shared with me was Romans 10, 13. And the soul winner, Art Owens, said to me, Francis, that's what they called me formally. I appreciate Francie. It sounds just so much more informal. Francis, do you know that you're a whosoever? And I said, no, I, I don't know what that is. And he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm a whosoever. You're a whosoever. And when he said that to me, it resonated with my soul because scripture is spiritually discerned. There's no way but for God that I could have understood that because the Holy Spirit has the power to cut through anything we can't understand and make it understandable. At that moment in time, it was like somebody had turned on all the lights and I thought, I'm a whosoever. <laughs> and he said, after all this that God has done for you, wouldn't you like to have salvation in your life too? I sure would. It's like, get the show on. My mind is thinking, let's do it. I couldn't have understood that without Christ, and, and neither can you. But your friend who brought you is going to take the extra time with you today to explain to you how you can know Christ as Savior so that all these lessons that you're learning, you'll be able to apply them with real relevance. Knowing that one day, if you have pulseless electrical activity. You'll just leave this shell behind and wake up in the presence of the Lord, which is not a bad thing. This is a very, very coveted, desirable thing. Sister friends, let's bow our heads. Right where you are in your spot, you do have an opportunity to ask the Lord to be your savior, to tell him that you know you're a sinner, to ask him to forgive you for that sin, and to ask him to give you salvation. And if you're going to do that in your spot right where you are, then I want you to tell the person that brought you, that's what I did today. I asked Jesus to be my savior. I asked him to forgive me of my sin. I asked him to please be my savior and to give me the salvation he died to give me. And then the Lord takes over from there. You don't have to make yourself a Christian. You become a Christian because Christ then takes over. And then you have him all the days of your life. You don't have to do it again and again and again. It's one time for all times. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for allowing us to have this beautiful conference this weekend. I pray for those who are here that do know you as Savior, that their lives will be transformed by the renewing of their minds as they take whatever you touched, their personal this, and they let you start working on that, doing your surgical work in the heart. And then for those, Lord, who don't know you as Savior, I pray that they would call upon your name today to ask you to forgive them of their sins, to ask you to be their savior once and for all. And I pray for those who brought people who don't know you, that they'd have a fantastic time on the way home talking about your beautiful free gift, 
that gift that you gave us in place of our wages of sin. Jesus, bless and magnify yourself, and thank you again for what you've given us this weekend. In Jesus' name. My friend. Okay, we're going to have a time of invitation right now. Abby's going to play and Anna and Sherry are going to sing. If the Lord has spoken to you about something today and you would like to come forward and pray, I want you to know this altar is open and you can come and talk to the Lord about what he has laid on your heart. We've heard about strength training just now, about how our challenges and trials how they increase our strength and our faith in the Lord. We've heard about learning to wait on the Lord, weight training, and patience with the Lord as he works in our lives. What a wonderful message we heard about seeing God's greatness in my life, in our lives personally. Maybe as Ms. Sonia was speaking, the Lord spoke to you about that. I know that Sherry spoke about timeless treasures and the importance of keeping our faith and our strength and our stand for God in these days. And I know that for the pastor's wives, the, mis the ministry wives, there was a tremendous thought, thoughts on being in the ministry, being thankful for it, staying faithful. There's so much that God has dealt with my heart personally with this week or today, and maybe you also. So please feel free to come forward and pray if you would like to. Maybe you would like to talk to the person next to you. You don't have to get up and come to the altar, but maybe you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today. That's what this altar is for as well. But you don't have to come up here. You can do it right where you're at if you'd like to do that. But they're going to sing, and I want you to feel free to come forward. I remember um, it's probably been 40-some years ago at a ladies' day, all by myself. I didn't know a soul. There were thousands of ladies there, but God spoke to my heart about something specific as the wife of a pastor, and I went forward that day and sealed that thing. Maybe that's what God wants you to do. There's something he's dealt with your heart about. I want you to feel like you're welcome to come up. I'm just going to go over here and sit while they sing. I'm going to be praying, but please feel free to come forward if you'd like to do that. from different paths the stories we could tell we've all walked some different roads once bound for death and hell but somewhere along the way the gospel reached our ears and the message that Christ came for all put joy in place of fear Whosoever will take him at his word, whosoever will call upon the Lord, whosoever will come and kneel before the cross, whosoever Whoa! 
so much all of you for coming um, we're going to have Linda lead us in a chorus and then we're all going to say goodbye so if you would all stand we're going to finish up this day ladies we'll end with numbers in page 7 the one we sang earlier how wonderful art thou <laughs>